Competition within the American lunar program is intensifying. Blue Origin is now aiming to replace SpaceX as the primary contractor for Artemis 3's first crewed lunar landing. To bolster its chances, the company unveiled the Blue Moon Mark 1.5, an upgraded lander designed to prove its readiness and rival SpaceX's Starship HLS. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues rapid progress, expanding infrastructure and refining Starship for upcoming lunar missions. Can Blue Origin's new design truly compete, or does SpaceX still hold a commanding lead? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Blue Origin's determination to claim victory in the modern space race has never been clearer. Despite recent setbacks, including the delay of its second mission due to unfavorable weather, the company remains unwavering in its pursuit of progress. While the exact return date for this postponed flight is still unknown, the delay only adds to the mounting challenges ahead. Yet today, our focus turns to something far more ambitious, Blue Origin's growing role in humanity's return to the moon. As we approach the final months of 2025, fewer than two years remain for NASA's Artemis 3 mission, an event is to mark the first crewed lunar landing since the Apollo era. Initially, SpaceX was chosen to lead this historic moment, with its Starship HLS serving as the spacecraft to carry astronauts to the lunar surface. However, over the past few years, progress on both Starship and its specialized lunar variant has raised questions about whether the vehicle can be ready in time. This uncertainty prompted acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy to introduce a bold proposal, reopen competition for Artemis III. His intent was clear, to accelerate development and ensure the U.S. returns to the moon before China achieves its own planned crewed landing. With this move, Blue Origin has swiftly emerged as space SpaceX's most favorable rival in the race for lunar dominance. However, Blue Origin's path is not without complications. The company's first prototype, known as the Blue Moon Mark 1, is primarily designed for cargo missions rather than carrying astronauts. Scheduled for launch around next year, the Mark 1 will test the systems needed to deliver supplies and equipment to the lunar surface, supporting both exploration and future construction. To handle crewed missions, Blue Origin has also been developing a larger and more advanced version, the Blue Moon Mark II. This upgraded lander will include a pressurized cabin, enhanced life support systems, and a more powerful propulsion design. Yet, like SpaceX's Starship, the Mark II has shown little visible progress, raising doubts about whether it can be completed in time for a crewed mission by 2027. Determined not to fall behind, Blue Origin has now revealed a new plan, one that could change the game. The company is reportedly developing a modified version of the Mark 1 known as the BM Mark 1.5 which will serve as an intermediate step between the cargo-only variant and the future crewed model. This new version will feature key upgrades in both size and functionality. The Mark 1.5 is expected to be slightly larger than its predecessor but smaller than the Mark II, striking a balance between capability and readiness. The most significant improvements will focus on the lander's interior. The cabin will be redesigned to include crew seating, workstations, control panels, and a fully functional life support system. The airlock will also be reinforced to provide better protection and efficiency for spacewalk operations, which structural and system enhancements will make the vehicle safer and easier to operate. By upgrading an existing platform instead of creating an entirely new design, Blue Origin can drastically reduce development time. Using hardware already in production means the team can focus on incremental improvements rather than starting from scratch. Moreover, once the Mark 1 conducts its maiden flight, data from that mission will directly inform and refine the Mark 1.5's design, providing a real-world testing advantage that could significantly speed up validation and certification. In terms of engineering, the Mark 1.5 will retain the traditional architecture of a lunar lander, complete with landing legs, horizontal structure, and dedicated thrusters for descent and ascent. While this approach lacks the vast scalability of SpaceX's towering Starship, it offers advantages in safety and stability, particularly 
when operating on uneven lunar terrain. Many experts consider this a safer option compared to the taller, more complex Starship HLS, which carries inherent risks due to its size and balance on the lunar surface. These factors could make Blue Origin's proposal very appealing to NASA. Some reports suggest that the company has already submitted an initial version of its Mark 1.5 proposal, with a comprehensive plan expected to follow soon. If the agency chooses to reintroduce competition selection for Artemis 3, Blue Origin's entry may become a serious contender against SpaceX's Starship HLS. The next phase of the Artemis program may therefore come down to one defining question. Will innovation or reliability win the race back to the moon? Blue Origin has shown its intent and SpaceX remains unyielding. The stage is set for one of the most intensive rivalries in modern aerospace history. So what do you think about Blue Origin's latest move? Can it succeed? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Following Blue Origin's bold unveiling of the Blue Moon Mark 1.5, the proposal has sparked excitement, but also a wave of skepticism. For all its potential, this new approach is not without serious risk. While it may offer a short-term path to solving NASA's scheduling challenges for Artemis 3, it's also a hasty response to an increasingly competitive situation. To begin with, it must be acknowledged that the Mark 1.5 project feels like a reactionary move, likely conceived after NASA reopened the Artemis 3 competition. While quick thinking can sometimes lead to innovation, this particular effort seems more like a stopgap than a long-term solution. The question remains whether the modified design is truly optimal or merely a rushed adaptation to secure Blue Origin's standing in the lunar race. When comparing the Mark 1.5 to the official crewed design, the differences become clear. A spacecraft that has been modified from an earlier cargo version will always face limits in performance and reliability. Even if it succeeds in carrying astronauts to the moon, there will be concerns about how well it performs in practice. The inherent compromises in its design could translate to reduced safety margins or limited capability during lunar operations. Moreover, the accelerated timeline poses another problem. For any lunar lander, the most critical phase before launch involves extensive crewed testing and system integration with the Orion spacecraft. Yet, as of now, it is uncertain whether a physical Mark 1.5 prototype even exists. If construction and testing have not begun, Blue Origin will be racing against time to complete all required milestones. Even under ideal circumstances, testing cycles are unpredictable. A single failure could delay the entire project, making it difficult, if not impossible, to meet NASA's already tight deadlines. Beyond the issue of readiness, there is also the question of sustainability. The Mark 1.5 will undoubtedly be smaller than the Mark II which was designed to carry four astronauts and a more significant cargo load. The reduced capacity of the Mark 1.5 means it would not be well-suited for long-term lunar operations, particularly once the Artemis program shifts its focus toward building a permanent presence on the moon. In that sense, the Mark 1.5 is more of a one-time solution, a vehicle that might be used once or twice, primarily to secure an early American return to the moon before China achieves its first crewed landing. Despite being a temporary measure, developing this variant will still come at a high cost. Adjusting an existing design, modifying hardware, and performing new safety certifications will require significant resources. If these costs exceed NASA's allocated funding, Blue Origin may have to invest heavily from its own budget, putting additional strain on its long-term goals. Then there's Blue Origin's broader challenge, its performance record. Despite over two decades of preparation, the company's progress with its new Glenn rocket, the vehicle intended to support lunar launches, has been slower than expected. While Blue Origin has made strides in engine development and payload integration, the limited number of actual launches raises concerns about reliability. To play a meaningful role in the Artemis 3 mission, Blue Origin must not only perfect its lander, but also ensure that New Glenn achieves a steady operational rhythm. Without that, even the most capable lunar vehicle will remain grounded. In short, the Mark 1.5 may provide an immediate boost to Blue Origin's ambitions, but it carries too many uncertainties to be considered a true solution. 
the risks of rushing development, the limitations in payload and crew capacity, and the company's current pace of progress all raise legitimate doubts about whether it can deliver on time. Meanwhile, SpaceX is showing no signs of backing down. Almost immediately after NASA hinted at renewed competition, SpaceX responded with a major update on the Starship HLS, signaling confidence and momentum. According to the company's latest announcement, it has already completed 49 key milestones in the Starship HLS program. These include advanced Advancements in software, support systems, refueling technology, and early integration testing. Looking ahead, SpaceX's next major tasks involve launching the first HLS prototype and finalizing its orbital refueling infrastructure, both critical for lunar readiness. These updates reveal that SpaceX remains firmly on track despite facing technical challenges. The company continues to demonstrate resilience and progress. A few months ago, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell personally assured acting administrator Sean Duffy that the Starship program remains aligned with the Artemis III schedule. That commitment carries weight, considering Shotwell's reputation for delivering on ambitious timelines. Of course, SpaceX still has hurdles to clear. The team must prove the reliability of Starship V3, achieve consistent orbital success, and demonstrate full launch reusability. With Flight 12 now expected to take place in January next year, the first half of 2026 will be crucial for completing those goals. Afterwards, SpaceX plans to to test a complete HLS prototype in a live environment, an essential step not just for technical validation, but for reaffirming NASA's confidence in Starship's capability to perform the first crewed lunar landing of the modern era. Despite its massive size, which some consider a liability, Starship also represents unmatched potential. Its ability to carry large amounts of cargo and personnel makes it the cornerstone of NASA's long-term lunar and Martian strategies. Unlike Blue Origin's Mark 1.5, which may only serve as a temporary bridge, Starship is designed for permanence. It embodies a sustainable architecture that can support not just brief missions, but entire lunar settlements. Looking ahead, the competitive landscape of American aerospace may soon shift even further. If Jared Isaacman, known for his close relationship with SpaceX, assumes the role of NASA administrator, priorities could change dramatically. Isaacman's leadership style favors progress through acceleration rather than restructuring, which could reinforce SpaceX's position and make it even harder for Blue Origin to gain ground. Ultimately, Blue Origin's Mark 1.5 faces a formidable opponent. SpaceX's experienced infrastructure and demonstrated progress place it far ahead in both capability and confidence. While Blue Origin deserves credit for innovation under pressure, its latest proposal may not be enough to overtake Starship's lead. In any case, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.